I'm Ben Urbanski, and I'm a solution architect for Aqua Security. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Aqua with Jenkins. It's a common goal of many Aqua customers to shift security left and empower their developers to scan early and often and to catch and address security risks sooner. This can be done by scanning on a developer's workstation or scanning as part of your CICD pipelines. Customers prefer to make the scanning as transparent as possible in a developer's existing tools and environments and providing the developers with enough actionable information there so that they can quickly and easily understand and fix the vulnerabilities that are found without accessing other teams or other tools. Now, one common CICD tool used by many Aqua customers is Jenkins. And Aqua can integrate with Jenkins using native plugins or CLIs and APIs and run its scanner as a container or as a standalone binary. Aqua can also integrate with many other CICD tools using native plugins or CLIs or APIs. Here we have a new Jenkins deployment with just the recommended plugins installed. And in addition to those, I've also installed the Docker build step plugin. Now to integrate Aqua with this Jenkins instance, we're gonna first install the Aqua security scanner plugin. To do that, we'll go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins, and on the available plugins tab, we'll search for Aqua and select and install the Aqua Security Scanner. Once that's successfully installed, we'll go and update its global settings. To do that, we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System, and scroll down to the Aqua Security Settings section. Now, if you haven't done this before, these fields will be blank. I have done this before, and Jenkins is remembering my values. So you will also need to specify the name of the scanner image to use when scanning and a URL to the Aqua server that you want to integrate with and Aqua user credentials for connecting to the server. Now you don't have to use the administrator credentials. In fact, we recommend you create a scanner user that has the scanner role, giving the scanner just the permissions it needs to scan images and push results back to, to the Aqua server. Also, because I'm running Aqua as a container inside Jenkins as a container, I'm going to add this additional Docker run option to specify the hoax network. Once you've done the same, you can go ahead and save your settings. And now we'll add a new project. I'm going to name this project after the name of the image we'll scan. And I'm going to make it a freestyle project, even though Aqua supports pipeline syntax. And then I'll click OK. And then we'll scroll to the bottom and add several build steps. First, I'm going to add a execute Docker command build step to pull an image from Docker Hub to scan it. And the name of my image is dit for c slash go tty. And I'll also provide the Docker Hub registry URL. And of course, if you were just adding the Aqua scan step, to an existing CIC pipeline of yours, you probably would have already built the image before adding the Docker scan step and most likely using a Docker file. And that image would already exist in the local host repository of the Jenkins build server for the Aqua scan step to scan it. Here, we're just gonna use this command to pull the image from Docker Hub and put it in the local repository. Then I'll add another build step to pull the Aqua scanner image. From Aqua's private registry. Again, there's several other ways you could go about this too. You could, you know, provision it to the Jenkins build server's local repository before building. Um, that would be maybe be practical if your Jenkins build servers are long lived. You could push the Aqua scanner image to a private registry and pull it from there uh, every time you do a build if your build servers are short lived. So you have options. Because I'm pulling it from 
Aqua's private registry, I also need to provide credentials to connect to the registry. So I'll do that here. And then we can go ahead and add the Aqua scan step. I'll tell it to perform whatever actions are defined by any Aqua assurance policies that apply to this scan. I'll point to the DIT for C slash GoTTY latest image in the local repository. And then finally, I'm gonna add a additional custom flag to the Aqua scan CLI to also display vulnerabilities by layer in the scan results. I'll save all these changes I've made and we'll go ahead and we'll build this project now. And when it's done building, we'll go ahead and take a look at the builds console output to see what happened. Where we can see that we pulled the image from Docker Hub, we pulled the scanner image from the private registry, and ultimately that Aqua security scan step led to this scanner CLI command, followed by these console events that describe our scan process in some detail. Ultimately, the scan succeeded, so the build succeeded, and you're left with Aqua security scan results here that include a risk tab that provide, provides a high level summary of your scan results. And you can see here that even though we found many vulnerabilities, we still mark this image as allowed. And that's because we haven't created any assurance policies in Aqua to tell Aqua to do otherwise. We're gonna do that next, but before we do, let's look at some of the rest of the information we get. On the vulnerabilities tab, we see a list of all vulnerabilities organized by resource or otherwise. And again, our goal is to provide developers with enough information here that they can quickly and easily understand and fix these vulnerabilities without having to go to somebody or someplace else. And so when possible, we're showing the developers if there's a version of the affected resource that fixes this vulnerability. That's often the first thing they're gonna look for because it's the quickest and easiest way for them to remediate the vulnerability by getting that version or later of the resource rebuilding vulnerability should go away. Again, we also can show you your vulnerabilities by layer so that you can see where in your image build you introduced which vulnerabilities. And had we found sensitive data or malware, we would have shown you that here too. Now let's go to Aqua. And on the CICD scans tab of the images page, I'll show you that you can also see the latest scan results for that image here where we provide similar information, yet it still says it's approved. Let's go to our assurance policies and update our default image assurance policy to add the vulnerability severity control set to fail if we find any vulnerabilities with higher critical severities in our scan results. We'll keep the default actions, which are to generate an auto message to alert us of the failure and to fail the build step if the scan is being done as part of your CIC pipeline and to mark the image as non-compliant. I'll go ahead and save this change to the default image assurance policy, and now we can go back to Jenkins and build again. This time, we should see the build fail. And if we select the build and the Aqua Security Scanner results, we should see that this time we've marked the image as non-compliant because we have found vulnerabilities that have a high or critical severity in the scan results. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is how easy it is to do the same from the command line. You could go to your console output and copy this CLI from here and paste it to a terminal. I already have a similar command prepared in this terminal, and I'm just gonna run it for you now. Look familiar? One difference is this command specified text up results to standard out. Our scanner CLI takes many different values from many different arguments, and with them you can control the format of the results sent to standard out and written to files, and it can be either text, HTML, or JSON. And that's it. I hope this video helps you understand how you can quickly and easily integrate Aqua with your CSD pipelines so that your developers can be scanning early and often and finding and fixing vulnerabilities sooner.